We're just about to set up for cladding. This video is about the thought process that I go through when I'm thinking about doing a job such as cladding, for example. So the first process in any job is establish what you're going to use. And we are going to be using thermo wood. It is my favorite cladding. It's generally the one I use as a softwood and it's been thermally treated. There's no chemical in it. It's a really sustainable material. All we need to do is basically work out what we're gonna need. Now we did that way back in the day. So we took the square meterage of the building. We took our channel cladding, which is the one we're using. And we worked out how many linear meters or square meters we would need. And that was what we established our order on. We also always allow 10%. Now, because there shouldn't be 10% waste, but timber is a natural sort of product. So you will get lengths with knots knots that aren't there, so you have to discard them and maybe use those for short pieces. So you do need to allow at least 10% for waste. Now that is also dependent on if you're using full length. So when we buy our cladding, we try to buy the cladding in the lengths as close to what we're gonna use. Not too close that you can't trim the ends off because you should always allow to trim the ends, but just enough that you can have a little bit of waste. So as an example, we're roughly 3.2 meters tall and our lengths are 3.6. So we're only, we're only cutting off a couple of hundred millimeters or eight inches from each end to get back to what we need to be. So it's quite cost effective as well. So there's a lot of things to consider. We've got an elevation here, a dominating elevation, which is isometric or, or symmetrical if you like. So if we took a line straight down the middle of those doors, we've got the same amount of wall that side and the same amount of wall that side. What we want to do is make sure that the cladding is as close to exactly the same either side, which means that we have to effectively set out from the center of the doors. And we need to make sure that we can have a decent junction around the reveal. The reveal is to the side of the windows. We always call that a reveal. And we want to make sure that we end up somewhere neatly on the corner. And the only way to do this is to make a rod. It's no good starting in the middle just to see where you come. You really do need to make a rod. A rod is no more than a piece of stick with everything marked on. It's used by bricklayers. They'll call it a gauge stick or a gauge rod. And we've got it here. To make this, we need to know what the cladding cover is. What is the cladding cover? That is how much it runs when you lock it together. To do that, we've got three bits of cladding. And these are just three that I've taken off the pile. And I just mentioned knots. So you'll see here, this one is actually got knots that are missing. And this is a typical characteristic of softwood. And it should be expected when you buy cladding or any softwood, you should always allow for that. Now this bit we don't need to discard because some of our reveals around the window, we will take from these strips and we might need a bit which is 60 millimeters or two and a half inches wide. And we can rip that from there by just cutting those knots off. So it's not wasted, okay? You can use it. So what I've done here is I've actually slotted three bits of the cladding together. Now this particular thermo wood cladding has got a really nice detail machined into it. It gives us a line that is the line that we push the joints up to, okay? So when we put the joints together, we take that piece there, if I open it up, we take this shoulder here, we push the tongue and the groove together, and that is where we wanna be, okay? That allows for the expansion and contraction. One characteristic of thermo wood, the way it's treated, it's got a very stable moisture content, providing it's not left out in the rain flat like this it's got a very stable moisture content. However, you still have to allow for movement, for expansion and contraction. Okay, so that is basically the cladding. Now the cover, what we'll talk about the cover. If you put these three together, the distance from the back of that one to the back of that one is the cover. It's around about four and three quarter inches or 122 and a half millimeters, okay? So the next one, double that, 245. That is how we set our rod out. So if we come back over to the rod, the rod, a piece of timber, a nice piece of timber, nice and straight. And all the way along, you'll see a series of marks. These represent the face of the cladding and the gap between, if you like, the cover. So that's exactly how it will look when it's up on the wall. 
Now the reason we make this is twofold. First of all, before I even start cutting anything, I want to make sure I know how many long lengths I need, how many short pieces I need, because that means that I keep the best ones for the long ones. Anything with defects we put to one side and we use for the short ones. And to do that, we need to use this rod. Ed has numbered it. Ed's, in, Ed's on the camera. I'm going to get him <laughs> everywhere. I'm always talking about Ed. He's behind the camera, okay? So um, he's numbered this rod, so we know exactly by just offering this up how many we're going to need. So we'll start at the middle of the window. There's a little pencil mark on the sill here. This is why a rod is useful. If we set out from the middle, you can now see that when we come to the window, it's not going to work particularly well because we've got the reveal, which is 20 mil thick, and then we've got, we haven't got enough cover to cut this one back to lap over the front. So what we'd do then is we'd start with a board in the middle, we'd move it over here to the center line there, we'd line that up, and then we'd have a look what we've got. And that is much nicer because by the time we've got a reveal in, we know we'll get half, a, nearly a half a full cladding board in there and it'll look a lot neater. We also pop a little mark on the counter button here, which represents the boards, and we can then rough it in and see how that gets us towards the end by joining up here. And we can see there that we get a full board ripped back towards the end. So that suits us, all right? That's the beauty of having this rod. It means that we know exactly where we're gonna start and provided we use this rod all the way through, we keep making sure we check our cladding, stick with the datums, we're not gonna go far wrong. Let's take it around the other side. The first thing I'm gonna come up against is this tall window. And it's a narrow window and it's a feature window. So what I want is the exact same piece of cladding here to here. So I've done exactly the same thing. I've marked the sill on the center. I've dropped in the rod and I've adjusted it to see what that leaves me at the corner, okay? And that is how I've established where we're gonna start here and so on and so forth. And we're gonna move through. Now it can't always work everywhere. Sometimes you have to make a compromise. For example, here on this window is gonna be governed by how the cladding travels down the building. And we may have a different reveal on either side but it's much smaller, it's not a dominating factor. So we can actually work around that, okay? So apart from that bit of setting out, using the rod, which is super critical, it's fairly straightforward. The cladding we have, we can actually secret nail if we want, it's designed for secret nailing. However, we're gonna start cladding from the middle and working our way out. And we can't secret nail it if we start in the middle. You have to start at one end and put the first one up, for example, with the tongue showing here, secret now, the next one secret now, the next one secret now. What we're gonna do is face fix, because you can also face fix. We're gonna use stainless steel, because stainless steel doesn't mark and it doesn't corrode. You can get away with some galvanized um, fixings, but I really would check with the cladding manufacturer or the nail or screw manufacturer. So it's not just nails, uh, screws, or sorry, it's not just pins that you can use. You can screw it as well. You can use a facade screw or a cladding screw, or you can actually use a screw which is seen. Some architects actually like to specify that, that they can see every single pair of fixings stainless steel and they make it as like a feature. But if you can imagine how that would look on here, it could be quite overpowering. So we're gonna go for something similar to what we see on the gables up there which is the same cladding and it's gonna be pinned. And the pins are only very small. 18 gauge or maybe a 16 gauge. 18 gauge here is absolutely fine. We've got a lot of fixing points. It's a lightweight cladding. The main reason for a decent fixing is obviously so the wind don't suck the cladding off the building and that can be a real issue in some places. So make sure, follow the building regs, follow your manufacturer's guidelines, use a decent bit of timber Thermo wood is great because you don't necessarily have to do anything to it. And if there's anything to do with fire regs, make sure you read up on that as well. It might apply to you in your instance and you can have all of this kind of cladding treated for fire retardant as well before it comes from the factory, if you like, all the processing plants. So that's that. We're gonna get on and start the cladding and we'll be doing other videos around that as well. Hope you've enjoyed this insight into the way I think about setting out and cladding and um, catch up with you again soon.